Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you for joining us. It is kind of the end of the day on uh, the 4th of July here in the United States. This is our Independence Day, the day we celebrate our independence and celebrate our freedom and uh, hopefully take some time, even in the midst of the fact that we are not a perfect country, that we have been blessed in many ways, and that perhaps uh, the divine providence has some role in uh, the country we have become and hopefully will hopefully get better at. At least that's the way I celebrate the 4th of July. Rather quietly, uh, don't want to do fireworks that much anymore because I remember how much it used to scare Jackson the Wonder Dog and Jackson is no more and the fireworks will just make me remember him more and that will make me sad. So uh, I don't think I'll participate in any way. Well, maybe I'll watch if they can be seen from far away. And, uh, yes, you saw the title of this uh, little reflection today. That's right. The Edsels of Our Lives. The Edsels of Our Lives. Well, it's a little bit fun. It's a little bit of a kind of reminiscing story of my childhood, but I think it will also have some meaning for all of us today. So, uh, I think it's an interesting idea, so we're going to begin the program right now. Yes, the Edsels of our lives. Now, here's the context. We are beginning on What It Takes Radio, a brand new podcast, and it's going to be great. Uh, my friend uh, that we have met through uh, various ways and is a good friend, but we've never met. That's the way things work. But I've come to appreciate his work. His name is Jim Hinckley, and he is one of the guys if you want to know anything about the history of the famous Route 66 in the United States of America, and by the way, there are Route 66 aficionados and fan clubs literally all around the world, and they come from all around the world to visit Route 66. Jim has written a number of books and has a number of stories about that, but along with that, uh, he's beginning a new part of his life because as he studied Route 66, he goes back to his family history, and his family was very much involved in what Route 66 was all about, automobiles. So it's going to be a, a program that is car talk on the Mother Road. The Mother Road is the term given to Route 66, and Jim has stories of cars and car history, uh, which you will truly you will be amazed, as I am, every time I talk to him, and you'll learn more interesting things for sure uh, from Jim than uh, you probably ever will by design. And there's always a life lesson involved in everything he does and we do, and so uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Route 66 and car talk and uh, we know you'll enjoy that program and we'll be getting it launched this month putting the plans together right now just like i can do for you and uh, he will be worldwide telling his story about cars and the cars of route 66 well <laughs> that leads me to what we're all about one of those stories is going to be the classic story of the great American car failure. And many of you know what I'm talking about. Um, you probably, even if you didn't remember it, you've heard about it, and that is the famous story of the Edsel. And so uh, may I go back into one of my past programs and do a little bit of an update. Something I did, uh, really, about, I think it was 15 years ago, and it was called The Edsels of Our Lives. Well, here's what I wrote uh, <laughs> 15 years ago. 50 years ago this week, 
Chester Beebe and I jumped on our bikes in our Michigan City, Indiana neighborhood, and we pedaled furiously down to the new auto dealership that had just opened up, and it was about 10 blocks from our home. And that was because we wanted to be one of the first, you know, be the first to see the new car that had just come out. And here's the story. Ford Motor Company, the famous Ford Motor Company, with incredible fanfare and high promotion, had had been telling us about a new, futuristic, and beautiful automobile that was going to join their line of car models. So, I know it, and I remember it well. On September 4th, 1957, the new 1958 Edsel was introduced to the world. Now, (laughs) when you're 12 years old, any shiny new car looks great, and we thought that Edsel was something else. And I remember telling Chester that, hey, you know, maybe we could even have an Edsel someday. And he agreed, boy, (laughs) that would be nice. Well, unfortunately for Ford, most potential car buyers were not poor 12-year-old kids. And, of course, the response to the Edsel is now legendary. Millions of dollars, years of planning and design by the best and the brightest, massive advertising and promotion went into the Edsel. No matter, it bombed. (laughs) After the 1960 model, Ford cut its losses and the Edsel slid into automobile history and infamy. (laughs) Some of you may remember that, and of course, uh, if you haven't heard about it, now you have, and you need to go back and look at it. And of course, uh, this is a good example. They were the best, and they did everything right. At least they thought they did. The best laid plans and projects, (laughs) well, you know how it goes. You know, as I was thinking about this, and thinking about this again as even I recite it right now, uh, I thought about some of the Edsels of my life. You know, I've been graced by much good fortune and good family. Uh, I've also suffered a lot of pain and disappointment. Um, I have produced a few Edsels in my life, for sure. Plans and projects, sometimes hopes and dreams and money, and they just never made it after so much effort and work. They were Edsels. (laughs) Well, right now I imagine you have too. And like you and like me, (laughs) there are a number of things that I would like to have done differently to uh, perhaps not have suffered through those Edsels. <laughs> well, uh, that is when I need to be reminded and perhaps remind you that one of the keys to our happiness is not to define ourselves by our past failures. But in the words of a saint entrepreneur, one of my heroes, the Apostle Paul, then we forget what's behind and we press on. Press on. We need to be reminded of that. We need to keep trying to do something new, something great, and something good. We need to keep doing that. And uh, let me tell you, a lot of people will make fun of you doing that. Keep doing it. You may have another Edsel, but then you'll get up and you'll do something new and different and try again. As I say, I've lived the experimental life, and I'm not so sure I would have lived it again knowing what I know, but it's the life I lived, 
and it's the one that I will seek to make the best of. We need to keep trying and doing something new. Here's the rest of the story. Four years after the Edsel disaster closed down, Ford came up with another new car idea. (laughs) Yeah, they did. And they called it the Mustang. So, just let that sit on your head for a while, and let him who has ears, let him hear. I'm Stan Houston. These are interesting ideas. Well, I trust that was hopeful and helpful. And uh, by the way, uh, going forward this week, we're going to do a series of things where I'm hopefully going to help you see some of the unique ways that entrepreneurial wisdom can come from the very spirit world. We think of the material world, the realistic world, but actually... If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to have faith. You actually have to be willing to to have faith that you can pick yourself up and you can do it again. And so uh, we oftentimes should seek our ways to live and do by looking at some of the faith systems and beliefs in our world. I think you might find it helpful and useful And we'll see how interesting it is. Not sure just where it will go, but by the time I start tomorrow, I'll know at least what to do with Tuesday. (laughs) Again, um, let me simply ask you to think about, uh, the reason I did this was, you know, it's now the 1st of July, the first week of July. It's halftime in year 2022. The second half looks like it's going to be rather choppy. There's talks of recession and maybe even depression, and certainly uh, the world is full of difficulty. But how are we going to look uh, at the second half of 22? And uh, we're going to walk tall. We're going to walk straight. We're going to uh, have faith. We're going to treat everybody we meet as the most important person in the world. And then we're going to see how life might be better. By the way, you're going to discover uh, we're going to start with a, a key to how to be a great salesperson. That's right. Nothing happens, they say, until somebody sells something. Well, let's start uh, talking about how you can be better at sales and marketing and by not asking for referrals. Those are going to be some of the ideas coming up on Interesting Ideas. Best and blessings to you because, as I say, always close with a benediction. Make the world a better place every day because you were here that day. And make sure that whenever you leave a place or space, it's just a little bit better than when you came. Bye for now. Thank you.